Welcome to the Free Birth Podcast, a supportive space for people who are learning, exploring, and celebrating their autonomous choices in childbirth. Together, we'll unpack truths, share personal stories, and claim our ability to birth freely and intuitively. Here's your host, Emily Saldea. Are you craving a community of like-minded women? Do you feel like an outsider in your family or your community? Well, I may have the place for you. We have a Free Birth Society private online community that's full of radical and wild women just like you. If you resonate with the topics that we explore on this podcast and want to belong in a circle of women who support each other in the self-exploration of free birth and wild mothering, come join us. You can apply online at our website, freebirthsociety.com. It's where myself and my team are hanging out these days, and we would love to get to know you. This is the third episode of our four-part series with Kim, tracking her wild pregnancy and upcoming free birth. We tune in with Kim at the tail end of her pregnancy to wrap up her third trimester before she heads into her impending labor. She tells us about her final weeks of dealing with HG, the fears and tests that are new to these final months, and her journey with a Doppler. Lastly, Kim tells us her birth vision of her upcoming free birth. Okay, my friend. (laughs) So at the time of this recording, we are at 38 weeks. Yep. Almost 39. Yeah. Okay. And how are you feeling? Take us, take us, you know, of course, tell us how you're feeling now. And then also take us into um, almost like a, like a wrap up of what. Yeah. Last couple weeks. Third trimester. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling very pregnant. (laughs) Um, a lot of the classic pregnancy things are happening. Like by 8 PM, I'm kind of just like done being a human. (laughs) Um, my body feels broken (laughs) by the end of the day, but I have a lot of like nesting energy right now. I'm doing a lot of, uh, I've been doing a lot of cooking and freezing stuff, made padsicles, making like electrolyte beverages for myself, (laughs) just you know, cleaning things. I had a day where I was like, I need to reorganize the spice rack. Just a lot of that kind of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) It feels good. Um, and normal aches and pains. Like I can feel baby getting lower, feeling pressure, back hurts. Uh, I'm still puking about once a week. (laughs) (laughs) That just has not gone away. That was about (laughs) about where it was in the last episode. Uh Uh-huh. And in the beginning of the third trimester, it actually, I think I puked a little bit more. Like it was like twice a week. I had a couple of weeks where it got bad again and I had more nausea and I was like, oh no, because I've heard a lot of stories of women with with HG um, getting worse in the third trimester and then like the third trimester being bad. Um, But thankfully it, it was just a little bit worse and then it got better. Um, wow. but, but yeah, still, that's still a thing. I, I like just two weeks ago was sitting in my car, like eating at, at, after the grocery store. Cause it, for me, it's like, if my stomach growls, that's like, it's too late. I'm probably gonna throw up, but I, <laughs> I tried to prevent it. So I had a moment where I was just like eating after grocery shopping and then just like immediate, immediately threw up. And thankfully I still have plastic bags in my car and um, I was just like sit, sitting there. It was during lunchtime. The person next to me was eating their lunch in their car. And I was like, I hope they don't look over. <laughs> so I feel really bad. <laughs> so I'm just vomiting. Um, but I, it's, it, those kinds of moments are 
honestly kind of funny to me right now, like this many months in where I just am like, well, this is just my life. Like I- It's your reality. Like I puke in the grocery store parking lot and and it sucks, but it's also like, well, I guess I have a new sense of what I am capable of handling. Totally. Uh, So- so yeah, that's that's a fun thing I'm still dealing with. But uh, oh, it's gonna feel so good to not be pregnant and just I know be normal again. I, a part of me like can't believe that. Like I still am like I'm just gonna puke forever, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be pregnant forever, and my body's gonna feel weird forever. Um, even though I I know you know in my head that's not true, but I'm pretty excited for that feeling of yeah. like my stomach feeling normal again. <laughs> um. But yeah, overall still feeling good and I'm walking every day. That's kind of the only exercise that feels good now, but but it feels good to walk and just kind of hanging and waiting. And the third trimester, like I said, I've still puked, but um, beyond that has been maybe the most fun trimester um, in that a lot of the body image stuff I talked about in the last episode, a lot of that kind of passed and that wasn't really an issue for me anymore. And I started to really just kind of like embrace and love what my body looked like and took a lot more like nudes of myself. And nice. um, I got really into um, making masturbation a regular part of my like self-care and practice that I hadn't been doing as much. I bought myself a fancy new vibrator that I hey. could I can use during labor <laughs> if I want to. That was like my my plan. I was like, oh, maybe I'll use this during labor. I made sure it was waterproof. Uh, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and actually, like when I was buying it, the I, the guy said something about me being pregnant, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm buying this vibrator to use during labor. And he's like, you know, I have worked in a sex shop for 20 years, and I've never heard that one before. <laughs> And he's like, that makes sense. People should do that. I was like, totally. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe he'll pass that on to another just, oh my God, woman. Pass that on. <laughs> I don't need him saying that. Guess I, that'd be a little creepy. I just got like, the funniest. I just got the funniest little like image of of your you know, you're like in your water tub and you're in labor and, and your darling husband like comes <laughs> over with the vibrator and is like, honey, is now a good time to try it? And you'd be like, get the fuck away. <laughs> <laughs> like in my, um, in my labor, you know, I, I, I have this really cute memory of Johnny, it, you know, my labor went on for a while and I have this cute memory of, of Johnny coming up to me and being like, you know, if, if you need anything, like I could give you an orgasm. And, and at that point, like that was the most repelling <laughs> idea. Yeah. I've heard that. Like I <laughs> like the idea of it. Not but you're like, the, no, <laughs> yeah, but uh, on the same token, I've totally, uh, absolutely held shower heads for women while they mm-hmm. you know, stimulated themselves. And <laughs> totally. You never yeah. know. Yeah, you never I, know. So I was like, I'm just gonna have all the tools. So exactly. That's, that's what it's about. You have that's, all the tools you <laughs> so that's one of my drop. tools. But it has been helpful as a practice. Like I've mm-hmm. been practicing relaxing during mm-hmm. just I don't know, there's like, you know, moments where where I feel like myself tense or kind of really observing like how I how I am with that. And so cool. I've been using that as a way to prepare, I guess, oh, or yeah. to get my body ready. Um, or I don't know, I'm working with my breath. So that's something that's been, so it's been a more fun trimester and also just, um, feeling the baby move so much and, uh, feeling more connected to the baby all the time. They're just like, they feel really like fun and bony. <laughs> feels yeah. like they're a bony baby. That's a, a, all like for a few friends and people who've palpated have said that they feel like they're probably real skinny. So I'm like, I don't know. That's what I feel too. Cause it, they're poking me all the time, but yeah. <laughs> um, Jacob and I are both pretty bony. So I guess mm-hmm. that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling very excited to meet them. Mm-hmm. Um, and mostly at this point, fairly confident, but I did want to talk about, like, I haven't, I have definitely had moments of fear and things have come up a few points in this trimester. Um, the first was like kind of 
maybe earlier in in the third trimester, I just started like every time I would look at a picture on Instagram of like a head coming out of a, <laughs> a person, I would have this moment like, oh shit, <laughs> like I'm going to do that, which is crazy. Like, of course I know what I'm getting myself into, but it, I started to feel um, really like kind of just extra vulnerable and, and kind of like, maybe I need to take a break from like looking at graphic pictures of birth and um, or just, and I, and I had, I had some dreams of like crazy things happening and I started to, to spin a little bit like stories of like, what if this happens? It was kind of a short lived period of time, just like a couple days, but, but I was like, is a, is a rite of passage. I feel like yeah. doesn't everybody do that? You know, absolutely. And I was, ha- I was like in some, I was having some insomnia during that time. Um, and I don't even really remember how I got through it. I just did. Like, I, I think talking with Jacob and maybe sharing some of it with friends and kind of everyone I like said, I think I talked to like my friend who is a doula who I plan to have at the birthing space and everybody was just sort of validated, like, that's okay that you feel that way. And like, you don't have to, you know, feel brave all the time. <laughs> like, like, it's okay. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah. And then that just kind of passed. And then I didn't really, I mean, I still, of course, sometimes a thought will pop into my head, but it's easy to kind of like name what that is and, mm. and, or, you know, name, like if it isn't actually my worry or mm. where is it coming from? Like what story is that from? Um, and, you know, I think as a doula, I, I found myself thinking of like some of the more traumatic births I've been to, But then I also would think of like the more empowering, beautiful ones and like kind of, you know, and and remembering like that just at the end of the day, like how it always just happened. Like it was like, it's, it's going to happen. Like just reminding myself that, that just, that this is like a thing that's really hard to actually like wrap your head around kind of, cause it feels super heady in a lot of ways, but I know that it's going to just happen <laughs> whether like, no matter what I do, exactly. my, my baby's going to come out of me. So I kind of just reminding myself that helps. <laughs> yeah. There's a nice release in, in really accepting how out of control you are, mm-hmm. or, you know, it's, it's like, really accepting it, like on a somatic level, really realizing that the yes. only way is through. My husband and I have a line that we say to each other all the time in our, in our household where when something is, is like that, and you know, example of, of the baby coming or, or it's raining and we were going to go out or whatever, something like that. We always just say, well, there's no point in having an opinion on it. Like yeah. it is what it is. And so let's move on, you know, and, and yeah. it's quite freeing. I actually found the <laughs> the children's rhyme, like the going on a bear hunt where it's like, you can't go over it. You can't go under it. <laughs> you have to go through it. That like came into my head one day <laughs> when I was having, and I was like, oh yeah, that's totally like, I can't, I can't like go around birth. Like mm-hmm. I have, I just have to go through it. So, um, and and I do think that my experience with um, all the puking <laughs> and and just like the challenging physical pregnancy that I've had has given me a lot of like, I'm just like, man, like there were so many days where I just wanted to be done and I mm-hmm. just did not want to do it, but I had to, I had to just get through the day. And so, and then there'd be a better day. So knowing like I can go through. Right. <laughs> Because I don't have a choice. <laughs> exactly. And it's the it's the essence of actually practicing surrendering and that mm-hmm. you, you know, it was not easy, but that you had so much forced practice and, you know, well, no use having an opinion in it. Like you're yeah. you're doing your best, you're surviving, you're taking each day as it comes. And yeah. how else, you know, what a be- there's no better way to approach birth of just to be like, okay, let's do this. And there's there's good and there's bad days. And I anticipate, I don't know, mo- I'm prepared for moments in my labor process, but, but maybe it won't be that way, but I'm totally prepared for like good and bad moments, like moments where I'm going to feel like, I can't in moments I'm going to feel really confident. And, um, and I have talked a lot to, um, Jacob, like, like just, you know, keep reminding me that I can do it. And I like, but I, and I know he'll know when he needs to say that, but, um, 
And then the, the other time that fear kind of really a- arrived for me um, was just about like two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. I was about when I was like 37 weeks. I uh, I had a night where, where I had two days where I started having um, really blurry vision and which that in itself was just not fun because you can't see <laughs> and headaches. And I, so I checked my blood pressure because I was a little bit concerned, like, oh, these are some preeclampsia signs. And that's something that is a little concerning to me. Um, and my blood pressure was pretty high. I normally, I haven't checked it a lot in my pregnancy, like maybe a handful of times, but I knew like my normal is, I knew what my normal was and it was it, fairly low. So I felt just a little bit uh, concerned about that. And then of course, probably my concern was just making my blood pressure higher because every time I would measure it, like I was feeling stressed. And Mm. so I'm sure it was just kind of, you know, a a vicious cycle. Um, But I have a friend who's a student midwife who I had already talked about like, Hey, if I call you during labor, like, because maybe I need some encouragement or maybe I want someone to like come and and maybe I decide I want a vaginal check or I don't know anything that I might want from somebody who has some midwifery knowledge. Um, are you cool supporting me? And she's like, totally. I'm not licensed. I support what you're doing. I think it's great. Like I, you can call me. So I texted her like telling her what was going on. And she was like, Oh, I'll come, I'll come check on you. Um, and I'll be there like in an hour and I'll bring my manual blood pressure cuff. And she also was like, I'll bring a couple things if you want me to do any, like she was going to bring urine strips and, uh, and some herbs that can help lower blood pressure and like tinctures. So I was like, great, that's sounds perfect. Um, and then after like a few minutes after we had agreed upon that, I suddenly felt in my head, I want to listen to the baby on the Doppler. And I don't know where that came from. Like I had never really felt that urge. And we had listened with our fetoscope of heard their heart. And obviously I know they have a heartbeat and I know I like was feeling them move. But I think that day before they weren't moving as much. And I just had, you know, it just started to feel like a lot of fear. And it felt, I was kind of aware that it was a little bit irrational, but at the same time, I didn't really know how else to like talk my myself down and it was hard having the headaches and stuff too I just felt like I don't know this is what I need and so I just scared. I was scared and so yeah. I texted her that and she was like are you sure because she knew you know she she knows everything I've been doing and um but she's like yeah I'll bring it and you know what like but we don't have to do it or whatever you want to do uh so she came over and she was great she was really like we talked she kind of talked me down a little bit. She took my blood pressure and it was high, but it wasn't, it was lower than it had been when I took it myself. And she was like really slow about it. Like she waited, you know, kind of got me the like small talk and stuff. So I was calmer, (laughs) which I think helped. Um, and we did a, I did a urine test and all the stuff she brought, she was very like, here's what I brought. Here's what it does. Let's do whatever you want, like you decide. And I realized from that experience how like amazing and refreshing it was to have like someone who's like, I mean, she's still a student, but like a provider, you know, actually like let you be in control, like be very not pushing anything on you and just being very like, uh, everything's up to you of service. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've never experienced, I've, you know, I haven't really seen much of that before (laughs) or experienced it myself. And just that experience in itself was really, uh, I'm really grateful for it because it was really amazing to know like, oh, that, that is like true care. You know, that's like, and that's what I wanted. And so. And um, that's true, like friendship and sisterhood. And yeah, this is about, you know, giving birth back to the women and giving birth back to community that regardless of her titles and blah, 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 that she's your friend and yeah. you said, Hey, can you come support me for a minute and check in with me? And she had the tools that she didn't like hoard and then coerce you into using them and take over. And, you know, all of the stuff that most providers do, like totally, he was your friend. And she has midwifery knowledge that she happily at will shared with you. Like, can we please all do this for each other? (laughs) I think, I I think like, I thought a lot about that experience and it was like, 
it's so, it was so sad to me, like how uh, much of a novelty that felt like. Like it was just like, oh, this is like I felt like, oh, I'm so lucky that I had that, and I unicorn. and I like, yeah, and and I like really built that, or I I had to like work to find that, and but that made me really sad for you know, everyone else who doesn't have that, Mm -hmm. but, um, but so we, she, you know, we looked at my urine and it was fine. turns out I was really dehydrated. So kind of explains the headaches and the, and the blurry vision. Um, and she gave me some tinctures and she had brought her a lot of different herbs like that I could drink as teas and tinctures to help with my blood pressure, like lowering it. And also that would just be like useful at this point in the pregnancy. So I was like, great which I have been using them because they've, and she was very like, just, you know, if it feels good, you don't have to. Um, but intuitively I have been using a lot of them and, uh, I, my blood pressure has been dropping. So like what passion flower? Yeah. The passion flower. And then I can't remember what the other one was for blood pressure. Then she also suggested, um, nettle for because for my magnesium magnesium being low and with the dehydration too uh mm-hmm. and raspberry really leaf of course no can't go wrong with nettles um and also hops um hops flower like a light tea she said before bed mm-hmm. like so she said not every night but like some nights and that was supposed to help with blood pressure um a uh, skull cap for mm-hmm. the headaches and that has actually been helping me a ton with anytime I have had a headache, which hasn't been a ton. And usually when I do, I know it's that I just need to drink more water. Um, but it like makes my headache go away right away. <laughs> so oh, cool. I don't know if it's psychological <laughs> or some, or whatever, a placebo effect, but. And how it did is. it, how did it wind up going with the Doppler? Um, so, so that was the, we got to at the very end, she didn't even really like bring it up. Um, but I did, I was like, I still feel like I want to listen to the baby with the Doppler. And I don't know why I didn't just ask her to listen with a fetoscope. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, I could have done that instead. I, I don't know what it was something about the Doppler that just felt like, and I, I, upon like thinking about it after it was like, definitely, uh, you know, kind of stories that I had of like, well, this is going to give me information. It's the same information, but but it, it is, was just it is easier. Yeah, it's easier and Everyone it's easier to in the hear. Room can hear at the same time and it is kind of like a little hit, right? It's like mm-hmm. like let me like we're all addicted, right? To the medicine. Totally. Medical it was like a hit. It was like yeah. and I was like, well, I, I haven't done it and like I haven't, you know, maybe it's okay. And we talked a lot about it and she was very like um she she told me after that when she was driving over that she almost cried thinking about it because she knew that it was a really big deal to me and she was just like kind of feeling you know and she was just like but also supportive of me deciding but my husband was at work at that moment and she knew that another important thing for me was that I I wanted him to be around anytime I listened to the baby's heart um and he wasn't. And so the first thing she said was, okay, like, do you want to take a video or a recording of this if you do want to do it? And I was like, yeah. And, uh, and I was like, what, can we just do it for like a few seconds? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, absolutely. So I just was, I was pretty insistent. Like she was, it was definitely not her, <laughs> but I just decided like, I want to do it. And I texted Jacob and told him that and was like, is this okay with you? I mean, it's my body, but I just, you know, because it was something that was a big deal to us. And he was like, of course, if that feels like what you need to do. Um, so, so we did like 10 seconds or so. She, like she did a time. So she, she was like, do you want me to get a baseline? And I was like, okay. Uh, and so we did it and was like, of course, <laughs> like baby is fine. <laughs> like everything I already knew. And it was like, baseline's like 150 something or like they sound strong and it's like and was, you know and then we know it's just in that moment so who knows but uh but I did feel so I had a lot of emotions after because I I felt very like at first I felt kind of guilty and I felt almost hypocritical because I was like oh, I've been so like you know it was like I've been so good and I and then I did this and and then I also was like, well, it's not that big of a deal. It was really short time. And like, I don't know, there was a lot of but this also, different kind of chatter. And it's <laughs> at the end of the day, like it's yours. 
Uh huh. And that, so where I, uh, I finally landed was like, after reflecting on it was like, I, for some reason I needed that. So like, or for some reason, that's where my fear led me. And the fact that I got to make that choice and that I got to decide that it was what I wanted and that I got to be sort of in control of how it all happened. And, um, that was to me, I was like, that is the whole point of doing a wild pregnancy and, and a free, like, that's the free part to me, you know, that I'm free to, um, make decisions based on whatever it is that I'm needing and feeling that I need. And in that moment, for some reason, that was the decision I had to make. Right. Not every decision we always make is necessarily in our highest consciousness or power. Like, yeah, I'm thinking about, you know, with, with my baby, like I throw crackers at her to, <laughs> like a circus animal so that I can get stuff done on my computer. Like <laughs> is that in my highest consciousness as a parent? No. Like, what I need to do so that I can um, navigate. Now that's a little obviously different, but, like, <laughs> but yeah, that like, it's my decision to make and I'm making it and, and, and that's what matters is it no one's forcing <laughs> me to throw crackers at my baby. <laughs> exactly. And then, and then I was like, I don't need to feel guilty for, you know, a decision that felt right to me. So overall, it was a positive experience for me, like in a way it, to have this like fear come up and to, you know, just kind of ride the wave of it and then see what happened and, and, and how to, we dealt with it. And to like play with it. You know, I mean, you you are you have stepped so far out of the paradigm that everybody else around you is swirling in. You yeah, know, it it's you know, obviously, you know, I I went in for a vaginal exam to the medical model, like, um, yeah, you know, like which is way more freaking intense. <laughs> yeah, like, harmful and complicated than a 10 second Doppler at home with your friend. You know? <laughs> but point being that like, you know, we we are women who are removing ourselves as best as we can and figuring out who we are when we take the reins. And right. that doesn't mean for every woman making this choice that they're going to be like it's not even the goal to be a hundred percent removed from the medical model. Of course not. Just like how yeah. in your last episode, you shared about going into the hospital when you needed IV fluids. Like the point is what you just what you just got to, which is um, to feel free, to feel powerful, to feel in charge, and to make your own goddamn decisions. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's what yeah. women need. Yeah, and I think there might have even been a part of me that needed that, like. Um, feeling of, you know, before going, going through this process of actually giving birth of just kind of being like a little bit of play of like in making my decisions and just, I don't know, seeing, I don't in some level, maybe it was kind of me just testing a little bit of like, like, what do I, what am I going to do? And what, where am I going to go? And I think, yeah, in the end, like the, the feeling, the confidence that I'm making my decisions is what, uh, I really got from that experience and, right. and thankfully it doesn't seem like I have preeclampsia. So, yeah. and I'm doing fine and I'm feeling great and, um, or, you know, as great as I can, I don't know, I don't well, and, in and every moment. Before but, you know it, like you've said no screen time. And then before you know it, you're watching the bachelor with your baby. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's, I think it's definitely preparation for all of that. It's like, you know, you, you walk into something with like all these ideas and then it's just like, well, maybe your reality doesn't look that way. And that's, and okay. that's the work. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's being present and that's listening and that's being intuitive. And again, that's being self-authoritative it's not we're humans right. we're not like <laughs> you know right. things like I was I had all these ideas about what I thought my pregnancy was going to look like and in most ways it hasn't at all and, and you know this is a good kind of segue into um you know I was thinking about this before we started recording the vulnerability of you doing this series with me before your first birth you know yeah and, like, we <laughs> and were, I'm 
Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like when I was choosing to do the Doppler, I was like, I had that thought. I was like, Oh, I'm going to have to talk about, I'm going to talk about this in the podcast. And like, or just, you know, the, not that I don't really feel like there's pressure on me, but like, I have been pretty, uh, I mean, though I'm being very like, quiet, I'm not really telling a lot of people in the world, like I, and I'm sort of anonymous and that, you know, I'm, I'm not like telling everybody about what I'm doing, but there is, it is vulnerable to, to share all of this and, uh, you know, to know that complete strangers are like listening to me talk and, and hearing (laughs) what I'm doing and what my plans are. And there's like a little bit of a a interesting, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. No, I mean, I totally get it because (laughs) I freaking transferred myself you know, after yeah. a year of, of this podcast and of setting up the platform I set up, which was, you know, super humbling and awesome and totally in my mind when I transferred and, and thankfully my story ended quite powerfully, but, um, <laughs> you know, but, but yeah, I mean, that was not, that was not, not in my mind. Um, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's what I was going to say is just the vulnerability of this series before your birth story. And that, when we check back in whenever you're ready in the fourth trimester, um, you know, obviously I will have been in touch with you. So I'll know what your story was, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> but I guess I just want to say, and I'm sure it goes without saying, but like the, the whole point of tracking this isn't, you know, only to have one narrative, you know, it's like, right. <laughs> this is you and this, you're my friend. And I wanted, you know, to do this thing with you, um, in whatever formation it takes. And, um, and I think kind of what we're getting to in this conversation is that we're really highlighting the point is that you are having a powerful pregnancy and you will birth in power. And so, um, that is your goal and your dream and what you're compassing towards. And the rest is up to the divine, right? Like we don't yeah. know what will happen. It'll, it'll be what it'll be. And right. that's just, and, uh, yeah, all I can do is like, we're saying can, all I can do is go through it. <laughs> right. All you can do is go through it, and, and whatever, you know, and, and part of, uh, part of this, that's kind of cool is, is that maybe does keep you to some degree, like, or another layer of kind of accountability or whatever, because you have put yourself out there before your birth, Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and this, it wasn't going to be a simple decision anyway, if you were to transfer or anything like, of course, that's why I wanted to track this with you because whatever happens is life. Like it's, it's you making intuitive decisions. Um, and that's the point. That's the goal. That's what we want yeah. to see women doing is feeling um, powerful in their lives and that they have the authority and the social respect, you know, and, and support to make their own decisions. Um, and then the rest is, is whatever yeah. will unfold. And I guess that is my hope. That's a lot of why I'm sharing my story. And, and my hope is for any people who are listening or people who've been following, like to, um, not feel like, like it, it shouldn't feel like you are putting pressure on yourself and making this decision or that you have, that it needs to look any one way. Um, that's not the point of this. Like the, the point is again, like to feel powerful to, and to really like work with trust, like trusting yourself and trusting the process and trusting birth. And, um, that is not an easy thing to do. Um, it's, it, takes all different kinds of shapes and forms of journeys for different people, but we have the right, um, to, to work with that trust and, and to like, we are strong enough to do that work. And, and I feel like society kind of tells us to put our trust in, in other people and just like all everything, you know, the trust is like, I, I do have like one of those pregnancy apps that I sometimes look at just for fun. And it always says like, make sure you talk to your doctor about this or ask your doctor or in everything. It's just like anything that you're feeling or doing or thinking, like you should go to an outside resource first. And I just, that, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't agree. And I, if there's anything I hope for and like, why am I sharing my story is just that like, there is another way and it doesn't mean, maybe it doesn't mean that you're a hundred percent outside the system. Maybe you do work with a midwife or maybe you do see, you know, it doesn't like the details don't matter, but just the, the fact 
of the matter is that this is a choice that anyone can make. Like I've had many people say to me like, oh, I don't think I could do that. And, you know, I, my thing is like, well, why? Like, you know, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't need to look the way I'm doing it, but that makes sense. I mean, that's just, that was, I think, part of why I felt like when you, we talked about doing this, why I felt like, yeah, I, I, I want, I know for me, every time I hear a story of a woman who has free birth, no matter what it, her story was or what it looked like, it gives me more confidence to be like, okay, she did it. Then I could do it. Like mm-hmm. I, and I want to do this and like, she wants to do it and she did it. And so I it's like that sister Morningstar quote, what one woman can do, all women can do. Yeah. I love and that. so I hope, you know, no matter how my birth turns out or, um, that maybe me being vulnerable in this way or sharing my different aspects and stories might um, help others who are wanting to do similar things or thinking about it feel like a little more confident because it's just like, oh, she did it. I could do it. Um, and, you know, to not, yeah, to just let it be yeah. what it, it's going to be. <laughs> so I'd like to, I'd like to then pivot into, I'd love for you to speak your birth dream. Yeah. Uh, if you I could, could do that. if you could <laughs> just, if you could just, you know, say it and then, so it was, you know, what mm-hmm. would be your birth story? So I've done a lot of work with that and that way I've done parts of the, the free birth course. And I did that, um, exercise like while listening to a song. Um, and that was really powerful for me to have. So I have like the song that I really associate with like my dream now. And I, I listen to it a lot and it's like a 30 minute song. So it's kind of, it's just like a meditative, like drums kind of yoga music song. Um, and I, I plan to listen to it at some point probably. Well, now you're going to have to but, say what it is because everyone's going to message yeah, me and say, I know, that's awesome. true. I'll have to, I don't even remember. It's like called like shaman music or something. Okay. I, I could look it up, but it's, so <laughs> um, don't message me asking me what it is. I don't, we know. can like put it on an Instagram post or something yeah. when you uh, put the, the, uh, the episode out. Um, so yeah, let me go through it. It's pretty simple. And, oh, and I do want to say, cause this was a really helpful tool for me. So I don't know if it would be like, I said, I, I wrote it all out and, um, and then I actually read it to all the people that I have invited to be in my birth space. Mm-hmm. And I played the song <laughs> that I had attached to while I was reading it. And, um, because I really felt like the song kind of communicated something to me. So it could be any song, but I think for me, that was a really useful tool. Cause I had this, like, it's like, I'm going to do my best using my words, but there's also just like feelings. You You're know? like, and I have a 20 minute interpretive dance prepared. <laughs> my shaman dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I will be performing naked with my vibrator. <laughs> the vibrator is a part of the, the dream. <laughs> All right. So take so, it. So my, I, my dream is, um, how I see it beginning is really however it begins, it begins. Um, and to be as specific as I can is that I'm, I just want it to be, if it, if it's going to be a slow beginning, then I plan to kind of just keep living my life, um, or doing whatever feels good in that moment, which will probably be the things I'm already doing, which is just okay. like, but you're going to have to pick for this okay. exercise. Sorry. Obviously you're going to flow with whatever happens, but yes, you know, <laughs> the point, what's fun about this, and I know you already know this, but I'm going to just say it again. I do. What's fun about <laughs> this exercise is it's not an expectation. It's not a plan, any of that. But if you could just pick one out of the okay. air of a beautiful, perfect birth story, what is it? Okay. I'll be, I'll try to be super specific. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard for me because I'm very like, it'll, maybe it'll be this, maybe it'll be that. Uh, (laughs) Especially because as a birth doula, I know that so well. Yeah. But um, (laughs) anyways. Okay. So uh, starting, I, I, I'm in my dream, I'm starting kind of slow and lying around and feeling, starting to feel sensations and um, allowing the sensations to come and go. Um, I imagine it being late in the day or nighttime maybe, and I, I do want darkness. So I 
if there's sun, pull the shades when I start to feel like I'm ready for that and um, turning lights off and just wanting like not too much stimulation. Um, and I follow my body from the beginning as it's still kind of letting things build, meaning um, if I want to use my vibrator, I'll use, I use my vibrator if I want to lie around with my partner. Um, and I imagine it just being me and my partner at this point. Or maybe even me alone if he's not around, and and I will call him when I feel like I want him around, or I might want I be alone at times too. I like to be alone, um, and just kind of moving around slowly, possibly baking something. I imagine baking something <laughs> just for the smells, and uh, I like details, so I want to. I'll have. Um, some essential oils going in my diffuser. Geranium and lavender are the ones that I pulled out for myself. I have all my like supplies uh, on my washer and dryer right now. So those are the ones that are right there. Um, putting on some music. And then as uh, I, I imagine that going on for some time, just this sort of slow build and following what, where my body wants to take me and just mostly probably staying in my house, but occasionally stepping outside um, to feel the grass beneath my feet. We have a lot of grass right now, which is rare in LA, but we had a lot of rain. So that's a nice thing. A lot of flowers around. Um, I want there to be flowers around. So I've asked my friend to pick some up if I don't already have some, but I usually have fresh flowers all the time in my house. So um, I'll just have flowers everywhere. (laughs) Um, And then as, as things begin to build, I imagine, um, you know, if wanting to go in the shower, wanting to use water, just shifting around from my tools that I have a lot of different toolboxes, uh, or or different, you know, like my labor playground. I have, I do have a tub that I, um, can set up, which I have been renting out to people for years. (laughs) So a lot of babies have been born in it, which is kind of amazing and awesome that I have all of that, um, good energy in this tub. And so I plan to have that set up, uh, if, you know, to get into, and I have a bathtub that's also that I might get into. Um, at a certain point, I, when I I start to feel (laughs) that I need some, maybe a change of scenery or some more support, plan to call one of my friends who is a doula, um, to come and, and, Kind of hold space and be extra hands and be give Jacob some moments to take a break and to rest because um, I want him to be kind of the main person around me if when if and when I want to be touched I imagine it would be him but um, she would come and kind of again like encourage me hold space watch but say very little want very little talking throughout the whole thing from anyone. Um, no conversations. And if ever, anyone in my, in the people that I plan to have, if they need to talk to one another, they know to do it in another room. And so not in front of me. I don't really want like any complicated sentences being said. <laughs> just want it very quiet and dark. And none and of those, simple. none of those whispers in the background. Yes. Uh, I don't want that. <laughs> so, and, you know, and since it be in my house and there's, we have different rooms, they can close the door. Right, I've right. said, <laughs> like, you can go into the guest room and close the door if you need to talk, um, which is fine if they need to, but like, don't do it in front of me. I don't want to use my brain <laughs> in a logical way. Um, and then I, um, when, as things start to build and I can start to feel like maybe a baby is starting to really descend or I'm feeling like more pressure, I feel like that baby's starting to, to come. And I also, um, I want to be quiet and, and just kind of as connected to baby as I can, because I know that they're going to tell me what I need to do. And that's my, my dream really is that this is just me and the baby working together. And everyone else is like, kind of like tertiary characters. (laughs) Like they're there to, um, you know, they're like the setting and the props and the, (laughs) and like the outside, parts, but the baby and I are both the stars and we're, we're running the show and we're really like are the show and we're doing it together. And, uh, and they tell me what they need and I tell them what I need and we're communicating together. Um, and I'm moving my body as they need me to. Um, so when I feel that 
my baby's communicating to me that they're getting closer to coming. I plan to, I, I dream of having or calling my best friend since who's been my best friend since I was 12. Um, I want her to be there and I want her to take pictures. Um, and I want her to see this. She's never seen a birth and I, whether she, she'll, yeah, she'll be there. I do want her in the space. She is just like a sister to me and I really love her and trust her. So I imagine I want her coming towards the end. So she'll come and she'll come really quietly and she'll take off her shoes and not say anything to me. And, um, if I say something to her, then maybe, but we're not going to really talk and she'll be there with her camera or doing her thing without really getting in the way. She's a kind of really good wallflower. So she'll be great at that. She's good. She's like a sneaky person kind of, so (laughs) in a good way. Um, and then I imagine, um, being maybe near the tub in my, in my living room in a squat as I'm feeling baby coming. Um, I don't, yeah, I imagine being like squatting or holding on maybe on all, on all fours and Jacob coming close to me. And, uh, I dream of kind of both of us catching the baby together and touching the baby, both of us at the, being the first hands to touch them and then them coming right to my chest. And I have something to lean into, like maybe I lean into the tub or the couch, which is close by or into him, um, so that I can just like lean back and sort of sit, um, and, and see my baby and look at them and hold them, kiss them and smell them. I will be the first person to talk to them. I will be the first voice they sit, they hear. I don't know what I say, but I say something probably not that smart, but (laughs) hi, maybe. (laughs) And then Jacob will talk to them and also touch them and kiss them. Um, And we'll kind of just be like the three of us in a little huddle. And when it feels right, my two friends will um, talk or come back into the space and their awareness. And um, they'll be... uh, having some emotion I imagine I would love like some just laughing maybe crying and feeling just a lot of excitement that like we did it the baby's here and um just excitement to meet them because we're all really excited to meet them and they're all people that are going to be an important part of this baby's life because they're people who are really important in my life um and then um I We'll get into sort of more comfortable position or maybe shift if I feel that I need to for when the placenta comes. Um, and I have a, a bowl set aside that, that I will have some one of my friends grab and I will feel when it's time for it to come and I'll tell them to grab the bowl and it'll just come out of me and we'll put it in the bowl. And then every all of us will go to um, my bed and someone will have put waterproof, uh, like a bed cover and our crappy sheets and <laughs> set up some towels and stuff for us. So we don't have to do that. And, um, Jacob and baby and I will get into the bed and just kind of lie and cuddle and the placenta will just be hanging in the bowl. And my friends will, um, get me some food. I made, uh, some, I made a turkey chili for myself because that was the thing I, I thought would sound really good for my first meal. So that's my dream to eat that turkey chili. They'll, they're going to defrost it and bring it to me and we'll eat together and they can, of course, eat if they want and uh, and they'll clean up the space and kind of throw laundry in or whatever needs to happen and then eventually leave. Um, break and, down the birth tub. Yeah, break down the birth tub get all the stuff out of the way, make sure that we have plenty of food and water so that we don't really need to, um, get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Or actually I, I know there is one more thing I wanted to do before my friends leave. I want my friend, one of my friends to, um, hop into the shower with me. Cause I want to just like rinse off. Um, and my shower is like steps away from my bed. So, <laughs> so I'll be not too far. And during that time, um, I want Jacob to be just laying in the bed with the baby skin to skin. Um, and I'll be able to hear and it'll be a fast shower. Cause I imagine I won't want to be away for that long, but, <laughs> but my friend will get in with me and kind of hold me and, and we'll probably like cry and laugh and talk because, uh, this has been a dream we've both had just 
this birth. And we knew like long before I was pregnant that she would be with me and supporting me. And we both had like visions of it. Mm. So we'll be celebrating together in the shower. And then she'll tuck me back in (laughs) and we'll probably just all be naked. (laughs) And, And then maybe we'll sleep after everyone's gone or we'll or we'll talk, I, we'll, we'll be happy and looking at our baby and just mesmerized at, at them. And finally, like getting to see the space we've been dreaming about what it might look like and their toes and just everything. <laughs> um, and um, when we feel ready, which we kind of imagine it being in sometime in 12 hours or so, um, we plan to, b- we'll burn the cord and we have some candles and and we're just, we'll just use like some uh, cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil underneath and um, we'll do that together and, and thank the placenta for all of the, the hard magical work it did. And, um, and then we'll, we'll sever that. Um, and I plan to bury the placenta um, and maybe take some of it to make a smoothie if I feel like I want to. Um, but then we have a couple different fruit trees that we got, um, in it for our yard and we plan to bury one of those. We haven't decided which one, but maybe an avocado tree or an orange tree, Cute. um, and in our yard and plant the placenta beneath it. Um, and then and you will never throw up again. <laughs> that I will never throw up again <laughs> until <laughs> maybe if I go through this again, yeah. <laughs> I might. <laughs> maybe, maybe, not. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. And then we continue living our lives as a family of three. Beautiful. <laughs> mm, I can see it. <laughs> I really can. It's pretty simple, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I I see it too. I actually like a lot um, in moments when I just walk through my house, I can like see visions of like, and I'm going to be here on my hands and knees and I'm going to be here like swaying my hips and I can like picture that. And Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting on my bed right now. And as I was saying, I like just very clearly can picture like the three of us laying in this bed together. Oh, I already love your baby so much. <laughs> oh, I'm so proud can't, of you. Can't wait to meet them. I'm yeah. just so excited to meet them. Well, you've, already met, you've already met them. I know. But to meet them in this, <laughs> in this way, yeah, to hold course. them and to Stare meet, you know, meet them in this like fleshy way. Yeah, in a fleshy way. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> totally. Because I, I know them in a different way, but... Yeah. <laughs> To see the 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 flesh that they're taking form in. <laughs> so excited for you. Well, I guess I just want to say that I will be holding you in my heart and praying for a safe passage of this sweet baby. And I have all of the faith and trust and respect and love for you in the mm-hmm. world. And Thank you. no doubts in my mind that you, like all of your ancestors, you know, maybe sans a couple recent ones, you know, <laughs> the vast majority of your ancestors <laughs> that have ever been have have done this and paved this road for you. And um, and we will be with you, you know, to go through this and and to light a candle for you and to hear your story, however it takes form on the other side. And, um, you know, I'm just so appreciating that you and I met as maidens and as, yeah. birth, as birth workers. And, um, and I, you know, I know, I know for, for probably all women who are birth workers and, and then, you know, have supported births. Um, I had no idea what birth was. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty like aware that I have, don't, I have no idea what I'm I know. getting myself into. <laughs> I know you are, but I say that in a good, in a good way, you know, yeah. in a, in a mind blowing, like in a, humble, <laughs> in a humbled mind blowing, um, like, you know, be sitting at the feet of the divine and, and remembering how, um, just being in awe of, of, these passages that are before us and that you're at that stage in this life in your lineage that I'm gonna cry that, that you're <laughs> that you are about to walk through this, you know? Yeah. 
it's so special and it's it's obviously women are crossing through these these portals every day you know all yeah. over and all mammals all are, are you know all of our sister species are are doing this every day and and it's just so it's like the biggest thing yet and the most normal thing right the most common and it's <laughs> it's so special to have witnessed you in this way and and I wish I was in LA um so that I could have witnessed your belly grow and <laughs> in real time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I just, you know, it's like, it really is like sending you on this. I mean, <laughs> not that I'm sending you on it, that that universe is sending you on this, this epic transformation. And, um, I guess one thing I wanted to impart to you that I know you've already heard it, but a line that stuck with me in my birth is a line that Yolanda passed to me, which is, um, birth will decimate you. And that's one of its gifts. Yeah. And that that is such a beautiful, powerful, you know, way to hold birth that it's not all rainbows and butterflies that it, especially first birth, like it's meant to make you lose your mind and, you know, (laughs) make you lose your shit. And that that's one of its gifts that you emerge from that, um, a new woman. Yeah. I, in a lot of ways, already feel that has happened in some, in some ways during pregnancy. And I'm, I am grateful for those gifts because I know it's like preparing me for this next part of the journey. That's just going to break me down. <laughs> and then it'll happen again in postpartum and, mm-hmm. and then it'll happen always in mm-hmm. different ways and different layers as you go through all the different levels of new and challenges and, and being a mother. That's what I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, I wait. <laughs> I and I wait both I know I have no idea and I'm also just happily going into it. <laughs> exactly. That's all you can do. All you can do. You I'm know. like little red riding head going into the forest. <laughs> like, but well, but I expect the wolf and and I, you know, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. And that the wolf in this story actually loves you. <laughs> yes. And the wolf's not going to, doesn't just want to eat me. Exactly. The wolf actually loves you. And in its decimation of you, you will be reborn from It's the a eye. mama wolf. <laughs> well, um, obviously you and I will keep in touch privately, but, but yeah. you know, as far as this is concerned, we will check back um, whenever you're ready. In, yeah. In the, you know, in your postpartum time, in theory, it'll be in like, but somewhere between three and five months. Yeah, at some point. I look yeah, forward to <laughs> sharing my story. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for you know having this platform and and letting me share my story. That's it for today, everyone. Join us next week for another episode of the Free Birth Podcast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your body, your choice. Lots of love.